In this video, I'm gonna show you how to bring product usage data from your app or really any other third-party data source into HubSpot CRM. If you're running onboarding or customer success in HubSpot, this is probably one of the bigger questions that you have because if you're considering a CS platform or another CS specific tool, this is something that often gets touted as a differentiator. The good news is it's not that difficult to do directly with HubSpot. So I'm gonna show you how we do this at Arrows uh, using a third-party tool called HighTouch. HighTouch is a reverse ETL. It essentially lets you query another data store and then push that data uh, into records in HubSpot. There's some other options out there. Uh, Sincari is another one, uh, which is pretty popular. Uh, but at Arrows, we use HighTouch. It's pretty easy to set up. Uh, and if I jump over to HighTouch, we can talk about a few of the things that are important there. So the first concept is sources. So at Arrows, we are pulling product usage data from our production database in PostgreSQL uh, into HubSpot. Uh, we're doing that by using models. Models essentially are just queries. So if I uh, take a look at this uh, plan count query, we're just looking at, um, you know, for each organization uh, in the plans uh, table where it's not a template, um, then pull them all out. Let us know how many plans there are uh, by each org. Uh, and then we have sinks. Uh, sinks essentially take uh, our models and our sources and combine them uh, and then push uh, that data into a destination, which in our case, uh, and for the purposes of those watching this video is going to be HubSpot. Um, these things can be set to run on a timer uh, at various intervals. We run them pretty frequently. Um, the idea being that you want your data to come in from your third party source um, and be as up to date in HubSpot uh, as possible so that you can rely on it when you want to go ahead and trigger um, you know, next actions or get a, get a clear view in reporting of what's happening in your product. So the thing that is really important to, uh, to note when we're setting this up uh, is the way that we're going to push that into records in HubSpot. So we push uh, data from our product into company records in HubSpot. The reason that we do this uh, is that companies are sort of the, a base record, right? Like they are similar to contacts in that regard, but accounts um, in, in Arrows, customers in Arrows are companies in HubSpot, um, and then they can have deals, tickets, contacts associated with them. Uh, and the way that we do that is we essentially have a base uh, or a, a unique identifier which we associate with that base record. So in this case, we have the ID of the company uh, in Arrows or the account in Arrows. Um, and then we use that as the reference to push uh, all subsequent data uh, to. So in this case, you can see we have the, UI, the UUID and then we have some data that's coming from product usage. So the number of Arrows plans that have been created, the number created this month, the total that are allowed on this customer's plan, um, the total um, customers that have been created in Arrows by this customer, um, the number of team members that they're bringing in. Um, in terms of picking the data points that you're going to pull in, one thing that I would think about is that this is not going to be comparable um, in the way that you would want to use this data to uh, an analytics tool, for example. So uh, when you're thinking about the data to, to pull in, uh, I would really look at what are the metrics that your teams, your success teams, your onboarding teams, are using either in reporting um, or to drive workflows. So things that are particularly common if you have uh, usage-based pricing, for example, uh, what is the, the key value metric that is used to determine that pricing? Uh, is it the number of projects, the number of plans in our case at Arrows? Um, or it could be uh, the number of team members. Uh, if you have seat-based pricing, that's pretty important to, uh, to bring in. Um, because those are the things that you're then going to use or want to know uh, when it comes to calculating things like health scores, when it comes to uh, thinking about renewals. Uh, is this an at-risk account? Is this an account uh, that has potential for expansion uh, when they hit a particular threshold? Um, so once you know those things, you can pull that data in. And then one thing that we, we do, which is, is important if you're using, um, if you're watching the rest of this series and are setting up uh, pipelines, whether that's with deals or with tickets, um, to, to manage your onboarding and success processes, is to set up a workflow 
This is essentially going to take the data which we're pushing from high touch onto the company record and copy that, uh, copy those properties to all the other records that are actually uh, that are associated with that customer. So in our case, we're just taking uh, when the uh, UID is set, uh, so when there is data coming in from the product um, at the company record, we just check. Uh, we have some fields that only come in for certain customers, so we check um, if those fields are uh, available or not, uh, because otherwise the workflow will fail. If they are available, it has all the properties, so we copy all the properties. Uh, if it doesn't have this plan allowance is not always set. Um, so if it doesn't have plan allowance in the data on the company record, then we just copy the other fields. Um, but once you have that that data at the deal or the ticket level, um, it becomes really helpful to uh, to drive processes forwards.